In order for us to find the DH parameters and their values for each uh, robotic arm, we need to first uh, attach frames to each one of the links. And to attach these frames, there's a very simple procedure here that we need to understand. And if we can understand that procedure, uh, it's very easy and systematic to go through all the frame attachments uh, and finding the DH parameters. So first, let's, let's talk about the procedure to attach the frames. Uh, and whenever we attach frame I, that means it's attached to link I. So whenever link I moves, frame I moves along with it. Okay, so so frame, for example, frame one moves with, with links one, with link one. Frame two moves with link two, and so forth. Okay, so again, this is the awkward link that we have drawn before. Uh, we have joint axis I minus one and joint axis I. And then we have here link I minus one. Uh, this is as general as it gets because they have different uh, four parameters. All four parameters are uh, assigned here with uh, with some uh, some values. Okay, so I'm going to put the procedure and then come back to this figure so that we can see where we can attach each one of the axes for, for the links. Uh, the way I'm going to do this is we're going to first take one axis at a time and then assign that axis for all the links. So let's say we, we take the z-axis first and then assign z-axis for all the uh, all the links and joints and then we go to the x-axis and then assign all the x-axis for uh, links and joints and then we go to the y-axis and then assign all y-axis to the links and joints. So the first point here for the z-axis to assign the z-axis assign all the axes along the axis of motion for revolute joints uh, would be axis for rotation or axis of translation for prismatic joints okay remember for prismatic joints are not going to have uh, rotational motion so there is no axis for rotation uh, there's an axis of translation and then once we put the axis line the motion axis line then we can choose either direction uh, to to assign the arrowhead for for that particular axis okay uh, just a little tip uh, it's always a good idea to uh, make these arrowheads as much as possible in the same direction uh, if the axes are parallel uh, between the z-axis um, otherwise we will create a twist angle unnecessarily okay let's look at our link here we're going to be assigning z-axis and if you see here this is the axis of rotation if it's a revolute joint or if it's a prismatic joint it's also the axis of translation for uh, prismatic joints okay so I'm gonna assign Z axis here along this line and at this point I can start anywhere in the line because I don't have an origin for my uh, frame yet okay so this would be Z I minus one and then this is the axis the axis of rotation or axis of translation if I have prismatic joint for axis I or joint I okay so I can assign ZI along this line so I assigned ZI starting from here but remember so far I don't know where the origin of this frame is so I put ZI here along the uh, axis line uh, I and then ZI plus uh, I minus one here along the axis I minus one okay uh, the second step is frame origins. How do we define the frame or origins? Uh, identify the common perpendicular between Z axes or the point of intersection between them if they intersect. Now, Z axes don't have to intersect, but they, if they do intersect, then identify that intersection point. If they don't intersect, then identify the common perpendicular between the Z axes. Now, these intersections will be the frame origins. So the intersection of the z-axis will be from origins. If the z-axis don't intersect, then the intersection between the z-axis and the common perpendicular would be the origin uh, for the frames. So let's see how we can look at this here. So this is here, axis i minus 1. And this is zi. And this is axis i. And the common perpendicular between these two axes is this line, if you guys recall. Okay, so this is the common perpendicular. And if I look at this, this is ZI, 
And this is this was the common perpendicular between zi and zi plus 1 that I did not draw here. So this is one common perpendicular, and this is another common perpendicular. So that means my origin is right here. I just uh, put this here, common perpendicular. So my origin for frame i minus 1 would be right at this point, the intersection between axis i minus 1 and the common perpendicular with the next axis. And this point would be the origin for my frame i, which is the point of intersection between axis i and the common perpendicular between this axis and the next axis. Okay, so that would be the origin of i, and this would be the origin of i minus 1. Now, assigning the x-axis, assign all x-axis starting from the frame origin that we just uh, found out, and then pointing towards the next joint. So I have to look at the next joint axis, and ha it has to be pointing towards the next joint axis. So the arrowhead for the x-axis uh, cannot be arbitrary uh, unless, you know, there are some, um, you know, uh, special um, cases where it, it, it can be arbitrary. Uh, but at, at least at this point, uh, it has to be pointing towards the next uh, axis common perpendicular. And then uh, if z-axis intersect, then the, the x-axis should be the normal to the plane that contains the two z-axis, okay? So if uh, z-axis are both uh, intersecting, they will create a plane, and the x-axis will have to be perpendicular to that plane, okay? Now for xi, I should be looking at zi and zi plus 1. Okay, so let's see how we can look at this here. Uh, this is the first common perpendicular between zi minus 1 and zi. So that means my xi minus 1 will have to be along this line, okay? Now, since uh, zi minus 1 and zi do not intersect, that means I have to be pointing from uh, zi origin, uh, I'm sorry, zi minus 1 origin towards axis i, okay? So this will have to be my xi minus 1. And same for here, I will start with the origin of uh, I and then I'll have to go along the common perpendicular that goes to the uh, uh, I plus 1 and it will have to be pointing also towards the next joint okay so if I implement this I will have my X I minus 1 here pointing towards axis I and starting from the origin of, of I minus 1 and then X I will be right here starting from the origin of I and going towards axis z i plus 1. Now for the y axis, assign all y axis to complete the right hand rule. Uh, the best way to think about the right hand rule is you can hold your hand flat, flat open, okay, and then point your thumb towards the, the z axis, all right, and then your four fingers should be pointing towards the x axis. Now if you move your four fingers 90 degrees that will be the direction for the y-axis, okay? So the thumb is towards the z-axis, positive, where the arrowhead is, and then your four fingers towards the x-axis, uh, again, positive, where the arrowhead is, and then if you move your fingers 90 degrees, that will be, that will be the direction for the y-axis. Now let's see how we can see this. So if I put my thumb towards, again, I'm using my right hand, uh, the thumb towards uh, the direction of z, and then my four fingers towards the direction of x, then if I move my four fingers towards uh, 90 degrees, that would be pointing downwards in this case. So that would be my y-axis going downwards. Okay, same with this. If I point my thumb towards the z-axis, and then my four fingers towards the x-axis, and then move my four fingers 90 degrees, that would be giving me an axis right here for the y direction. So if I implement this, I'd be drawing the y-axis here and the y-axis here for y i minus 1. Okay? Uh, now let's talk about frame 0. Frame 0 is kind of unique because it's the ground frame. Um, and for me, it's you know I can assign, anybody can assign the frame 0 arbitrary because it's the ground frame. You can assign it anywhere you want. Um, as long as it's attached to the ground. 
uh, attached to the ground, meaning that it doesn't have to be physically attached. It can be above the ground, but you know, it's you already know that this doesn't move. It's always with the ground. Okay, but it's always good practice to make an option to assign it such in such a way to bring as many dh parameters as possible to zero, and that would avoid some calculations and having to measure, uh, you know, the distances and so forth and angles. Okay, so this is a recommendation. Uh, assign frame zero to match frame one when the first joint variable is zero. Okay, so basically, initially the frame, uh, frame both frames zero and one would be the same frame before you start moving joint one. Okay, now sometimes you might want to make uh, this a little different if your base is on the ground, yet you have an option, and again, we're going to see some examples of this. You have an option to put it on the ground or put it up uh, at, at, at a little height. Uh, we're going to see these options, uh, and that would maybe more, may, make more sense if uh, if you are looking for kinematics that link um, the the, the uh, position and orientation of the end effector all the way down uh, to the floor of, of your robot. Okay. Now again, this is only recommendation. Uh, so that you can set some some of the parameters to to zero, and that would reduce your calculations. But otherwise, frame zero can be assigned arbitrary. Now, frame n is also a unique frame. Uh, this is the frame at the end effector. Remember, the end effector does not have to have a frame uh, since there is no joint between the frame before n and frame n. Okay, so this is like an extra frame that we assign at the end effector or at the gripper so that we can have the kinematics start at the gripper always, okay? So frame n again can be assigned arbitrary, uh, but it's representation of your gripper location, and there is no joint between frame n and the last frame, the frame before frame n, uh, that, that would have any, uh, any joints, okay? So again, we would like to assign this frame such that as many dh parameters as possible can go to zero, uh, and in this in this uh, way, if you understand this, we're going to look at examples and see how we can do uh, such a thing. Now, once we assign the frames and attach them to, to each one of the links, uh, including the ground and the gripper, then we are ready to extract the DH parameters. And, and here's a um, you know, procedure here to uh, extract the DH parameters easily. Um, and I tried to explain this and put some uh, little quick reference figure so that we can do this uh, as easy as possible. So the first thing is AI. So uh, this link length for of, uh, link I, which is the distance from ZI to ZI plus one along XI. So this little uh, graph here shows you ZI and ZI plus one, and this would be XI. Remember, xi is a common perpendicular between zi and zi plus 1. And that distance here would be the distance between zi and zi plus 1 along xi. And that would be a i. Okay. Alpha i, which is the twist angle for, uh, uh, for link i, uh, which is the angle from zi to zi plus 1 ab about xi. All right? So if you look at here, if this is zi, and this is the i plus one, and xi is right here, which is either going towards the screen or out of the screen. Then the angle alpha i is the angle between zi and zi plus one about xi. Okay, so for these two parameters, these are the link parameters, we use the same axes zi and zi plus one on both of them along or about xi. Okay, now we move on to the other two parameters for joints. Uh, so di is the offset, joint offset, which is the distance from xi minus 1 to xi along zi. Again, I drew here a little graph. So you have xi minus 1 and xi, and this is zi. So that uh, joint um, offset would be di which is the distance between the xi minus 1 and xi along zi. Okay, and the fourth parameter is theta i, and this is the angle from xi minus 1 to xi about zi. 
So if we have this as xi minus 1, and this as xi, and this dot here is zi, which is uh, the axis that's either going to the screen or out of the screen, then my theta i, which is the joint angle, would be going from xi minus 1 to xi about zi. Okay? And again, for these two parameters, the joint parameters, we are using the same axes, so xi minus 1 and xi on both of them, and either along or about zi. Okay? So we look at the same axes for the first two link, uh, the first two uh, parameters, and then the same axes for the second two parameters. So I'm going to replace these four figures by a single figure here that includes all four of them, and we're going to use it also, you know, during the example, uh, so that we can refer to this quick reference here. Now there are two special cases. <clears throat> the first special case is when joint axes zi and zi plus one intersect. Okay, so if they intersect, that means that the common perpendicular uh, basically can be, uh, you know, a line that goes, between, you know, along the intersection. So in this case, the direction of xi can be either of the two directions. Remember, usually xi has to be pointing from zi to zi plus one. Uh, that's for xi. Now, if these two are intersecting, that means you cannot point from one to another because they're intersecting. Uh, in that case, you can point xi to either direction, as long as uh, it's uh, uh, perpendicular to the plane that contains zi and zi plus 1. So that's one special case. Another special case is when uh, joint axes zi and zi plus 1 are parallel. So when they're parallel, that means the common perpendicular would be between them, and it's not unique. There will be infinitely many lines uh, for a common perpendicular. Uh, as long as these lines are parallel or perpendicular to both zi and zi plus 1. So in this case, the choice of the origin of frame i is arbitrary. So since you have infinitely many lines, that means you can have the intersection between zi and the common perpendicular anywhere, depending on when you are, where you are choosing your uh, common perpendicular uh, between these two uh, parallel zi and zi plus 1. Okay? But it's always recommended to choose uh, uh, that origin such that you can uh, cause di to go down to zero. Okay? Now, um, this is a quick uh, way to find the dh parameters. If you can understand it, it will make your life a whole lot easier for all the examples. And you can try to understand this quick reference. Um, you know, this can help you actually both in... Uh, doing the uh, frame assignments or attachments and also finding the dh parameters. So try to understand this and then you can use this as a quick reference uh, to check and see how you did with your frame assignments.